Man, it is always good to see you guys. BJ got back. What time did you get in? Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. Well, I appreciate you guys taking the time, as always, to come out. Um, you know, very, very excited where we're going, where we're pushing this thing for. And, you know, the support that we've had from Bronco Nation, um, obviously administration, Jeremiah Dickey, like we are pushing the envelope. And in and, and all facets, if, if things are like, well, we haven't really done that yet, it's like, well, why? What, what's a better way to do things from recruiting to how we train, everything? We're trying to make sure we push the envelope to have the best, obviously, players we can, develop them the best way, and be ready for the season coming up in the fall for Bronco Nation. So excited where we're going, excited with the players we're able to bring in. Obviously, the early signing day period in December with some of the transfers that we're able to bring in, along with, obviously, a great group of high school um, players that we're able to be on campus now, and some of them will be coming in the summertime. Excited where we're going. And just like anything, we're a developmental program, and we've talked about that a lot, like finding the right high school players that fit Boise State, that are about what we're about is everything. And, you know, we, we talk to our team a lot about being built different. Like, we're different here at Boise State. We have a blue field. We do things different. Like, there's you, how we train, how we treat people, how we work. That's who we are. And finding guys where it means more to them than just another school recruit them. It has to. And everybody that's signed here feels that way. They've either sat in my office, coaches' offices, and they know, like, it's different. I need, I need to be there. That's where I'm going to be developed in the best version of myself. And so everybody that's coming here understands the hard work that's needed, understands um, what they need to do to be a part of this, and that's what excites me. There's been no smoke and mirrors to this recruiting process with any one of these players, scholarship or preferred walk-on. It is, this is how hard it is. This is what we got to do from when you wake up to when you go to sleep. This is how demanding it's going to be. And we are built different here, and it takes a lot. So very excited about this group, excited for us, not only in this first month of training with Coach Hilgar and his staff. It's been, it's been awesome. We've taken steps. I'm excited for us to finish up February and then obviously transition into, into spring ball. With that, guys, open up for questions. How weird is a day like today? This used to be the, the day, and now it's <laughs> like you're adding a walk-on, a gray shirt. Like, but for the most part, you there's no suspense or anything today, uh, not adding anybody new. How weird is that? Yeah, it's 100% BJ. I mean, it's definitely changed over the years. You know, the, the month of January used to be, for lack of a better word, kind of holding on to all of your recruits as you push all the way till February. And, and this is really the day. I mean, as we all know, there are the days of the facts coming through where you're talking to them on the cell phone, like, hey, did you send it? And you're waiting for the facts to come through. Uh, it's obviously changed a lot. And with the early signing day, it's changed a lot, too. Um, being able to, we, we went on the road recruiting a little bit less than some staffs because I wanted us around our players. I wanted us to make sure we're holding them to high standards, not only starting fast in the, in the weight room and on the field, but also academically to make sure we start um, this semester right. And then al also with a group of freshmen and some transfers here to make sure that they understand the standard here and that we're around them through this month of January. But when we went on the road recruiting, primarily was focused on the 2025 class and kind of working on for the juniors going to be seniors. It sounds like the rules are going to change for signing day, and I don't exactly know. I'm not that smart yet, but what do you know in terms of the December signing day, maybe moving and transferring? Mm -hmm. What's the talk amongst your peers in the coaching industry? Yeah, Mike, there's, there's a lot of talks about it. Nothing's final. There's talks about it being in August. There's talks about it even being earlier. Um, still working through. There's been a lot of calls about thoughts and and all those things. Not sure when that's going to change or when there's going to be an actual decision, Mike, but it's definitely talked about a lot. I, I like where the signing day is now, personally. Um, I feel like it, you, you get through your season. Um, and I think I, my, my opinion is I believe these recruits need to see. I think if you sign somewhere in August, there's so much movement in regards to either coaches leaving, um, how a team's doing. I just think it leaves you a little bit too much time for these players, just thinking about the players themselves. And then a high school coach brought it up to me, which I thought was a good point, that, Coach, if these guys sign their – scholarship before they start the season. What's the motivation for them to even play really well as a senior? You hope they do, right? You hope they just love playing the game. But I think there could be chances that it will be a little bit less. So my opinion is I, I like where the signing days are right now. I think it's, it's clear. You understand that you have one, that you have guys that have been committed through the whole time that they can sign December. And then the January signing date gives you, or excuse me, the February signing date gives you some times to um, maybe fill in some of those needs as well. He's doing an awesome job um, since obviously being on campus and us being straight up and forward with him and his family, how hard is it going to be, you know, all the things we talked about. Um, he's been awesome. He's been a great teammate. He's working his tail off. He's getting extra work with quarterbacks and receivers on his own, and he, and he knows he needs to come in here and compete. 
And that's the awesome part about Malachi and our team is he knows that nothing's going to be given to him. He needs to be ready to compete, compete with Mad Dog, and and grow in every aspect. And he has. He's been a, he's been a great great addition to our team. Haven't obviously seen him throw the football at all. We we can't get into that. But just how he is as a as a teammate and how he is in regards to how he works, it's been awesome. Um, we were able to spend some time off the field. We go to church together on Sundays with a good group of some other teammates. And um, just seeing him gel with them has been awesome. Is there any, from what you know about him, I guess you said he may not be able to see him watch him throw football much right now. But um, where do you expect him to thrive? And where does he, in your mind, maybe need to, to grow a little bit to you know, maybe, maybe be a QB1 for you guys? Yeah. I think just like anything, he's, just, he's a freshman. You know, and, and that's the thing that not only from the recruiting process, Obviously, a very highly touted recruit, um, rightfully so, but he's a freshman. So there's a lot of things, not only even in the weight room to training to building, putting more body armor on him. Um, there's a lot of things that he's excited to grow in and that we're excited for him to do. Obviously, can't really speak to a lot of the football side of things. He's extremely bright in meetings and, and picking things up. Um, but a lot, we'll, we'll have a lot better idea of exactly where he is as we go through practice one all the way through practice 15. But in my interactions with him, his interaction with his teammates, He's been awesome. He's been low ego, high output, humble and hungry in regards to how he comes to, the, to work every day. And that's everything. That's everything, obviously, for the quarterback, but for any position on our team. Because no different, the same thing I'm telling you guys, the same thing I'm telling our guys, that you could be a two-year starter here. You could have just walked on campus. Nothing will be given to you. Everything will be earned. There are no, well, you're the starter for 2024. No, we got, we got a lot of work left to do. We've got a lot of work left here. There's a lot of things that still need to be figured out at all positions, all 22 on O&D and special teams. So that's the thing we're bringing into our guys, that just because you've either been here or you just walked on campus, nothing's going to be given. You've got to compete for everything you get. How much did NIL come up when you were recruiting him? Hardly at all. Because the guys that we recruit, they need to want to be here. Um, why? It's different for everybody. But either the structures, the place, um, how we're going to grow them as people, we talk about all the time being the best version of yourself. And for the guys that we're looking for, that, that it will come up through conversation. We'll have those conversations as we go through. But it is by no means something that is a defining factor for guys coming here. That's not what I believe in. It's not what we believe in. It's about finding the right fit for this place and them having a very clear understanding, Ron, what it takes to be a Boise State football player and where we need to go. So for us, is go find the right fit. If it becomes about things outside of development, outside of competing, outside of the things that we focus on a lot, they're probably not a fit for us. And that's okay. It doesn't mean that they're a bad kid or a bad person. It's just it's not a fit for Boise State. And us being true to that, once again, you talk about being built different. It takes a different type of guy to come here. They, they, want to, they have to compete in everything they do, from practice to in the weight room. And that's the standards we hold here. Malachi is a guy that doesn't necessarily need NIL money. He made quite a bit before he ever got to USC. I mean, in a way, is that part of what makes him a perfect fit here, that he's not interested in the NIL because he's already done it in the past? What makes Malachi Nelson a perfect fit here, Ron, is, is he wants to continue to grow and develop to be not only an elite quarterback, but an elite individual. That's who he is, right? That's how his family's raised him, being around his mom and his dad, phenomenal people, and how they've not only grown him, but the rest of his siblings. Um, he fits here because he's like, Coach, I want to develop. I want to be the best quarterback I can be. I want to be the best person I can be. And I know that's what you guys are about. We tell people we are a developmental program. It's not about just finding needs. And, and if you can't do it, we move on. Like, we want to develop people. And I believe in developing people. They will always be better football players. He wanted that. And that was my initial conversation with his dad, with him, with every single one of these players. We talk about Malachi a lot. But there's a lot of other really good football players that are, that are coming to Boise State football that, uh, that we need. And it's all been the same how hard it's going to be, the standards we hold, and where we're going to need to push this forward, and how we're going to de develop you as a person for life. I care about when they leave here the type of husband, father they are. Like, that matters to me. And developing him, them in that way, that will always make sure they make the right decision on fourth and one, too, right? But it's developing those people. Yeah, I think we've talked to you publicly since Chris Marshall mm -hmm. uh, came. What, how's he fitting in and kind of just your, your thoughts on him? Yeah. Chris has been awesome. Um, he's... He's focused. He knows that he needs this place. And we've talked a little bit about it. With Chris, obviously, he's had some stuff off the field. He's gotten himself into, um, into some issues prior to coming to Boise State. As a football staff, as an administration, we did tireless research going through it to make sure 
talking to coaches, prior places, um, had long talks, obviously, with his parents, everybody around his life. And because we are very protective of our locker room. We're very protective of this place. Who we bring here is everything to me. It has nothing. To, we, we will never bring someone here just because they're a good football player. It has to be who they are mentally too. Obviously, football and their talent level starts the conversation because we want to find the best football players as well, but you got to find the right people first. And with going through it with Chris, going through um, the situations he's been in and going through it with people that are surround him, um, we believe that this is, this is a place that he can come, he can develop. And we know that we have the structures in place to where he can be very focused. It is football. It is school. It's about being the best version of himself. And he knows that. He was very adamant as we recruited him that he knows that that's exactly what he wants as well. It's not that just what we want for him. He wants that. He wants those structures where he can work, grow, develop, and be the best football he can be the best football player he can be. And BJ along the way obviously continue to grow as a young man and make the right decisions, maybe not the easy ones in situations, to where he can grow and develop here. So the couple weeks he's been here with his teammates, um, with his coaches, he's done a great job. Obviously we're only, you know, so long into this semester, but he's also very aware that this is his shot. This is what it is, this is what you got. Um, he's gonna be held to a very high standard just like everybody on our team. And we're not changing for anybody. And he knows that's very well. When you do recruit these guys that you know you have have had a history in the, in the past, do you often see that they do realize that you know yes, this is my last chance, and appreciate it a little bit more? Yeah, I, I, I would I would believe, in my opinion, that it's it's case by case basis, um, and actions prove everything, right? You can say as much as you want. Um, and these young men, they got to prove it with their actions. They got to prove it with their actions when they are here as well. But also the people that are around them that can really feel their heart and getting to know these individuals too, that they want to improve. They, and they also know they need to. And they know that the structures they have in place here, how we're going to develop them, how we're going to make this um, a situation where they can learn from the mistakes in the past, grow and develop here to make sure you don't make them the future is everything. But I do believe for guys that have potentially had issues in the past and have had things that have gotten them in trouble, they know that this is the shot they need. And this is all they got. And there's a streamlined focus to know I have to handle business. I got to do exactly what I'm told or I'm not going to have this shot either. And I know I need this. In terms of a talent, just what kind of wrinkle does he add to your offense? Yeah, very explosive receiver. Obviously, he was a basketball player most of his life. Um, really came on the scene as a football player as a junior, um, but long, athletic, can run, um, phenomenal catch radius, and a big-time competitor. I mean, you see that when you watch his basketball film, football film. I mean, that ball in the air, he's going to find a way to get it. So football-wise, very excited for who he is, but I'm excited for him to grow and develop to be the best version of himself. To talk with him, there's nothing I want more than him to grow to become the best man he can be here. Football will take care of itself for Chris, and in the long run, he's going to be a – um, an influence for young kids down the road, too, to make sure that he helps them and has a legacy in the future. Spencer. You, that he could, you, know, you said that um, we know we have the structures in place for a guy like Chris. As, as, as much as you can say, like what, what is, what's gonna be, what, what is that structure about, mm -hmm. or is there a theme to that structure, mm -hmm. I guess? Yeah, and Jay, not just for Chris, for our players, because I'm a big believer in structures so that players can remain focused. There's a lot going on in college football from transfer portal, NIL, coaches. Like, there's just so many things that maybe five, six, seven years ago wasn't, wasn't even an issue. You signed in signing day, and it was like, I'm going to be there for four to five years. That's changed now. And so a goal for me with every player on our team, using Chris as an example, though, is just focus in on every part of their life to create structures where they live is that the right living situation so you're not you know too far away from campus where you can be here a lot because you need to be school wise making sure that's set up for them car is it best for you to have a car is it not okay how do you get to campus just creating structure what are you doing on saturday what's our plan every saturday what's our plan on sundays do you want to go to church is that something you want to be a part of creating structures in their life and being upfront about it to where okay i know where you're at because your life matters to me. And this isn't just for him, it's for the rest of our team. So then they can keep their focus. Because the quickest way to not to develop, to be the best version of yourself as a coach or as a player is you lose focus. You focus on the things that you can't control um, or, and that don't really mean anything in the long run, right? And you lose focus on the things that really will change your life is the hard work, the academics, being the right um, 
person and growing in that is really what's going to change. But if you lose focus and focus on things you don't, it's going to be hard. So we want it with all our players, from the position coaches to me, every single one of their lives, we try and create structures to where they can focus on development in football, development in the classroom, and obviously how they live their life when they're not around us matters and how they can do that the right way. How did uh, you guys come across Kevin Griffey? Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a long story, to be honest, Jay, but a, a guy that I know well that's a, a, a part of Boise State football um, got to know the Griffey family a little bit. And, and when Tevin entered the portal, um, had a conversation with him, had a conversation with with Ken Griffey Jr. And, and obviously had a conversation with his mom. And they're phenomenal people. And the whole time it was just about Boise State, kind of what, what we are about. And if that was something that Tevin wanted to be a part of, talk with him and his family. Um, got him up on a visit. I know the initial part, to be honest, when, um, when all the coaches met Ken Griffey Jr., there's a little bit of just wow factor, you know. But it's, he, he, Tevin is a phenomenal young man. I mean, if he was in this room right now, he would be smiling ear to ear, cracking a joke. Great personality, very driven. And he's obviously, he gets that from his parents. And he's becoming his own person. I told him, Tevin, this is not about your family. This is about you. Is this the best fit for you to become the best version of yourself? And as we talk through this process, it was. Um, and getting to know his family and, and who they are, they're phenomenal people. Um, and so it's been awesome to get to know them and get to know them more. Um, and since Tevin's been on campus, he's done nothing but work his tail off and continue to grow. Spencer, back to Malachi. In terms, I'm not sure how much you scripted spring ball and, and, and how that's going to work out, but it's going to be CJ and Malachi. And I know you got a couple of other mm -hmm. the focus is going to have to be yep. on those two. How are you going to structure that? No, good question, Mike. We're, we're still working through that. Obviously, with spring ball um, about a month away, we're still – because competition is going to be everything. And not only how we script practice in regards to who's getting what reps, team periods, are we getting enough two-minute in there to see how quarterbacks, but offense and defense as a whole operate in these critical situations. So, Mike, it's honestly something that we're going through as a staff this week. Should really have the pretty much the entire spring ball laid out from scripts to periods by the end of this week into early next week. So we can make sure that at the quarterback position, but also at all positions, when you leave spring ball, not only do we have a really good idea of where they're at, I want that young man, whoever it is, to have a really good idea about it too. Not because they didn't have enough opportunities, not because it wasn't you know, set up in a situation. I want us all to be on the same page because then at the end of spring, every single player on our team meets with me again. And it's this is where you're on the depth chart, this is who you are, this is where you are from strength and conditioning, academics. So Mike, it's a full evaluation at the end of spring and it's a, hey Mike, this is exactly where you are right now. Not maybe a random opinion, this is black and white. This is how you are academically, in the weight room, in life, training room, and obviously on the football field and where they see the role. So we're still working through that in regards to reps and who's going to get what, and, but competition is going to be high. Um, so we, for them and for us as a coaching staff, we can see exactly where they are and where they need to grow and develop. And Maddox Madsen will be able to, as we go through spring, get a little bit. He's obviously still recovering from his knee. But hopefully as we go through spring, he'll be able to get potentially some reps. So we're still kind of unclear of exactly how much. But as we go through spring, he'll be able to get some. More than just throwing reps? Still working through it, Mike, and I'm not, not telling you. I know our trainers are still kind of working through some things because he's work, Maddox is working his tail off in the training room. That's just who he is. Um, so hopefully as we get kind of later in spring, potentially some seven-on-seven, seven, maybe even some team as we go, that's still a little bit up in the air. By August 1st, there's no concern whatsoever. That no, be 100%. no, 100%. He'll be ready to roll. Yep. I don't know how much you can say about this, but what's Jalen Clark's status with the team? Guys, right now, I'm going to have to say no comment on that. Appreciate it. Anything else? Uh, you mentioned some of the structure that you're exposing everyone to, but um, with NIL, that opens kind of a new wrinkle with guys having more money than they were mm -hmm. you know, maybe yep. in the past had access to. Um, do you guys have some sort of like financial literacy classes that you have them take? I'm just kind of curious about that. Yeah, there's some different either um, people or classes that will educate them on, and some of it is um, either – particular to one individual or a couple individuals, sometimes is with the whole team. So as much education as we can give them, either A, on this new space, which is NIL, what it is, but then also, I mean, even from taxes to how to handle that the right way, to there's just a lot of different levels of this that I want to make sure our players are educated on and understand, and just what what is name, image, and likeness. Like, it's not just handouts. Like, this is stuff, this is you know, it's, it's, there's a business part of this thing, and just so they can understand and be educated on that model. So there's a lot of education going on, and even some things, to be honest, that I'm even trying to crank up and do more with. You know, because 
like we kind of talked about even prior to, and this is a little bit tangent from your question, I apologize, but um, we're a developmental program. I've said that, I know, probably too much, but we're a developmental program. We do want to find the right transfers that can come in and maybe meet some specific needs, but it is all about finding guys that want to come and develop. If it's a one-year guy or the majority of the freshmen we come in, that's how we recruit them, that's why I recruit them. I mean, we had, you know, we'll recruit guys like Clay Martineau's a linebacker. He's a, he's a four-star now. We didn't recruit Clay because we thought there was a chance he could be a four-star. We recruited Clay because we knew he fit here. We knew he fit here from a football standpoint. Long, athletic, can run, loves football, great family. It didn't matter that he became a four-star a couple weeks ago, but I believe he's that talented without question. But it's about finding the right fit that wants to come here, develop, and understand that we're built different here, and, and that's a, there's a confidence in that. You obviously what? hired an assistant coach from uh, Ball State. What, what did he play or what role did he have in getting um, Tavion here, and what do you think of Tavion? Yeah, it's – I mean, obviously, whenever someone transfers, the first thing – you know a little bit about them. You could look at how tall they are, how big they are. You, I end up watching some initial film quickly, and then right away it's who are they as a person. And so with knowing Tyler Stockton at that point when Tavion was in the portal, it was awesome to be able to have someone. He was his defensive coordinator to be know strengths, weaknesses, who is, who is he mentally, how hard does he work, um, and be able to get that direct feedback from his defensive coordinator. Um, and then obviously we brought Tavion on a trip, got to know his dad, his mom, uh, phenomenal people. He's got one year left eligibility. Can't wait to grow and develop and continue to push. Um, and he's done a great job the month he's been here. Well, can you tell us about Sincere Brackett Lambie? Mm -hmm. Sincere Brackett is a awesome young man. And getting to know him, his dad, his mom, the rest of his siblings, um, you know, th I really believe the sky's the, the limit for him, just in regards to who he is as a person. If he was in here right now and talking to you guys, you would leave, be like, whoa. That's an impressive young man. Obviously, where we're at scholarship-wise um, is why he's going to be a gray shirt. So he'll be here next January, January 2025. Um, but I've seen him play in person. I've seen him at camps. Um, extremely explosive. Obviously, at linebacker, you've got to be able to lead not only yourself but the whole defense when you're out there. And I saw him time after time do that. Matt Logan, the head coach at Centennial, has done it at an extremely high level for a long time. And when he says coach is one of my favorite players I've coached, the biggest leader on our team, that says a lot. And that carries a lot of weight with me. And then when I see it, um, sky's the limit for sincere. Not only just with football, I'm excited for him to come here next January and grow and develop, but who he's going to be in our locker room, who he's going to be amongst his teammates is going to help them grow too. What's his connection to Michael Beck? I have no idea. But I saw that video and I was excited to see it. I was like, great, I had no idea. That's a good question, though. His dad and longtime friends. Oh, okay. yeah. It was like, a, it was like an unofficial couple. Yeah. Is there any film out there with Troy going across uh, Trevor McKenna at the in, uh, you know, 5 ASIC game or anything? We got to find some if we don't, Jay. We'll, we'll at least turn the, the competition up when we go through. But Troy, Troy's a great young man. Even while I was the interim head coach going through this, he, he would come out to, um, you know, when it was opened up, able to come out to some of the practices and see us and just getting to know him as a young man was awesome. Love his, love his high school coaches. They've grown and developed him a ton. But not only the stock he's from in regards to his family, his high school, he fits here. Not just because he's from down the street, but he fits here. He's all about the work. Every time we talk to him, he's either leaving the weight room or going to the weight room. He's that type of young man. I'm um, excited for him to grow and develop. He's got a great frame, explosive athlete. Um, I'm excited for him. Do you anticipate him more being a, a long snapper or seeing time on the defensive line? Right now, way more focused in regards to defense. Like, I think he has long snapping ability, but definitely playing defensive end or stud, which is what we call our edge position, either one. Very long, very explosive. Those bodies are hard to find, especially with the right mental makeup. You mentioned the scholarship uh, numbers. Uh, where, where are you scholarship number-wise? Mm -hmm. uh, I know it's been kind of shuffle in the spring a little bit. Yeah, I don't have that right at the top of my head, BJ. Um, but it's definitely going to shuffle down through spring. Um, right now, we're in a really good place. Feel good about our team, our roster. But there's going to be shakedowns we go through spring and into the summer. I don't have those exact numbers at the time. Yeah, we'll see as it goes. Like right now, um, we're right where we should be, right where we should be. But there's going to be change. That's how it always is as you go through spring. I hope not because I love our team, I love our players. But right now, we're right where we should be. Spencer, your thoughts on, on how Ashton Chanty should be promoted in the offseason? And do you specifically, would you specifically endorse some kind of offseason official? University promoted Heisman campaign before the season even starts? I think anything to promote Ashton, I'm all about. Knowing 
also because I know Ashton. He is one of the most focused, driven young men I've ever been around. Um, seeing him at the morning workouts, that, that man is on a mission. And with all the, the hype and things going on, which he deserves, it's, it would be easy for someone to lose focus and focus on some of those things. He has not. And anything I can do to support him, to publicize him, I, every, every time I'm asked, anything I can do because he deserves it. It's not because I think he does. I see him. His actions deserve it. Not only what he's done this, this first two seasons here, but even what he's done this, this month in January. I mean, he is bringing guys with him. If someone's not upholding the stand in regards to how he work, Ashton Genty's on him like this. And not only is he doing that, he's holding himself to the highest standard. I mean, that young man's on a mission. And that's the biggest way that I can say it. Have those meetings started? Have you guys started having meetings about that? I can answer that. Yeah, I, I haven't had those meetings with him um, much, Mike. My focus is just on how he's going to grow and develop this year. Um, but any of those things I would be open for. I just want to make sure our whole team stays focused because there's a lot of great opportunities. When you live in, a, in an area like Boise or Bronco Nation, Love and Sport, there's a lot of opportunities. And I want our guys to have those opportunities, whatever they are and the right way to do them. But I just always want to make sure our guys don't lose focus because that's the quickest way to not only not let them grow and develop Mike to be the best version of himself, it's how we will be pulled apart as a team.